PCSK9 inhibitors are a new type of injectable medicine for lowering cholesterol in the blood. There are currently two available, Rapatha and Praluent. In this video, I will explain everything you need to know about these injections, including how they work in the body and about specific side effects. I will also answer some related questions such as, do they cause diabetes? Can it increase blood pressure? And can I take these with a statin? Now this video is part three of a series highlighting different medication options for people who are looking into lowering their cholesterol. So let's get started with what are PCSK9 inhibitors. Research has shown that people with high levels of a certain protein called PCSK9 tend to have high cholesterol throughout their lives and develop heart disease early. But people with low levels tend to have low cholesterol and a lower risk of heart disease. This discovery led to the development of PCSK9 inhibitors to lower cholesterol. So these inhibitors are known as monoclonal antibodies and they work by binding and inhibiting the protein called PCSK9, which is made in the liver. And as a result, this leaves more receptors available to capture your LDL, or sometimes called bad cholesterol, for breakdown and removal from the blood. So who can take PCSK9 inhibitors? So these inhibitors are usually prescribed by specialists and they can be prescribed for people who are already taking statins or azetamibe, but their cholesterol level has not yet been brought down to target. They can also be an option for people who can't take statins due to the side effects, like intolerable or dangerous muscle aches, muscle or liver damage from statins, or elevated blood sugar or other side effects. If you would like to learn more about statins or azetamibe medications, I will leave a link in the description box below. So how do you take it? PCSK9 inhibitors are given by injection once every two to four weeks and can be self-administered. You can inject at any time of the day, but usually people prefer injecting during daylight hours because it takes 30 to 45 minutes for it to warm up to room temperature and you need to be able to easily see what you're doing when you're injecting it. After two to three months, you will have an appointment and a blood test to see how well the PCSK9 inhibitors are working. So what are the common side effects? Now all medicines have side effects and the most common ones that have been noted are flu-like symptoms, such as a cold, runny or stuffy nose, nausea, headache, back pain and joint pain and muscle pain, soreness or itching where you give the injection. And what are the serious side effects? These include high blood sugar levels, respiratory tract infections, urinary tract infections, and high blood pressure. You could also have a serious allergic reaction. Now these are not all the side effects, for a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. So one of the questions that's asked is, does Rapatha cause diabetes? In the cardiovascular outcomes trial, diabetes was reported as a side effect in 8.8% of those taking Rapatha compared to 8.2% on those receiving a placebo or dummy. So it is possible that using Rapatha could cause high blood sugar and diabetes. These side effects were commonly reported by people who used the drug in clinical trials to help prevent stroke, heart attack and the need for certain heart surgeries. The next question is, can it increase blood pressure? Rapatha can cause the side effect of high blood pressure in some patients and this was reported in one of the clinical trials. So do remember, you can have high blood pressure without any symptoms so when you are on Rapatha, it is important to get your blood pressure checked regularly when you visit your healthcare professional. The other question is, can I take statins with this? Yes, for many patients, PCSK9 inhibitors may be used in addition to a statin to help lower high LDL or bad cholesterol levels. I would also like to add that there has been controversy linked with Rapatha 
and an increased risk of heart attacks. An article published in the British Medical Journal stated that there were discrepancies in the number of deaths reported in the original studies. When the results were re-examined, they found 11 more deaths from heart attacks in the Rapatha group. They suggest that there needs to be more research to determine if there is a link between Rapatha and an increased risk of heart attacks. And they also suggest that people who are already have established heart issues to be cautious when considering starting Rapatha until there's more studies that have proven that it is safe. And lastly, for those who don't like injections, there is an oral PCSK9 inhibitor on the horizon, which is currently in clinical trial phase at the moment, so watch this space. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and please share your thoughts or experiences in the comments section. And you can also watch my other videos, especially on how to lower cholesterol naturally. Thank you for watching.